Hey, Wes here. Thanks for joining me today. Thought I would talk about two things. Uh, first, about the kiln in a little bit more detail than what I've gone into in the past. There are a number of kiln videos out there, and I think the first one was with Tony Soros, did a great job. Uh, for me, this has worked out great, but I have kind of adapted it a little bit over time, and I thought I would go into some of those things, and maybe that would be helpful for you. And then once that's all done, I've got some pots that I'll bring out and we'll get them fired and see how that works out. Well, first of all, I don't really have a backyard where I can really build a fire. So I ended up buying this portable, it's a grill actually, kind of a fire ring uh, made to grill hamburgers and steaks and that sort of thing. It's pretty big. Uh, I bought it used on Craigslist for $50. I think if you bought it brand new, it was more than my budget would allow. But I think it's about 31 inches wide and what that means to me it's big enough to build a regular fire so if I want to build a wood fire for firing pots I can do that or it's big enough for a kiln like this and it's portable too I can take it apart stack the bricks somewhere else get it all out of the way so it's really not a problem so for me that works out pretty well if you're going to use something like this though make sure that it is sturdy. I can't imagine how heavy this all is. There's gotta be at least 40 bricks here, and I've got a bunch of sand in there too. There's at least, uh, I think 80 pounds of sand. I'll show you how that works here in a minute. Uh, so it obviously needs to be strong enough so it doesn't collapse. So if you look underneath, it has a concave bottom, and that gives me a couple of problems. One, if I build a fire in it, I don't really get as much airflow as I would like to have. So I try to build something up on the inside. The other thing is when I wanted to build a kiln like this and stack up bricks, it was really difficult to get a flat surface uh, to stack the bricks on. And I wanted to have more space. So what I ended up doing is I filled the bottom of this with sand. I got a couple of bags of sand from Home Depot. I think they were 40 pounds each. And that way I could kind of level it off and have a flat surface to build the bricks on. All right, so once I put sand on the bottom and leveled it out, you can see that I have placed bricks as kind of a, a foundation or basis to build the rest of the kiln on. And I also hollowed it out on the bottom for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to have good airflow going there and I can also use that area to put charcoal down or to preheat everything and so then what I do after that is I have grills okay I have grills that sit on top of these bricks and so I can have charcoal underneath them it gets the pots up uh, off of the fire and uh, gives plenty of ventilation. Ventilation is important and I don't know if you can tell but here I have a, a large opening. I also have openings all around the lower courses of, of the bricks and so you want ventilation at the bottom and but then tighten it up as you get to the top and actually the higher the chimney probably the better flow you get so what I could do instead what I could do instead is tilt these bricks up sideways so it'd give me a little bit more height, but I seem to have as much as I really need to have. Speaking of bricks, these are just paver bricks. They're actually cement. They're not actually bricks. Uh, and they work okay, but you can see that most of these are broken half and they don't last a real long time. They'll start breaking right away uh, I just have to work around that. Fire bricks would be great, except they're very expensive. These cost about 50 cents a piece uh, a year or so ago, and they have worked out okay. Um, and I think that you just have to be prepared to replace them and add to them from time to time. So this is a pretty large cavity, and one of the things you can do is just restack all your bricks if you want a smaller area. The other thing that I do sometimes is I use more of these grates and stack them up around to make it smaller on the inside. Uh, this can take an awful lot of charcoal, uh, easily a 20 pound bag. 
and uh, that gets a little expensive and more than you what you actually uh, need to have so once you have your pots inside sitting on the sherds uh, I tend to cover them in sherds to protect them but you can use other kinds of saggers if you wanted like a, I've used the steel pots before uh, they've never worked great for me or I would imagine you could just pile charcoal on top of everything but you'd get a lot of fire clouds but that would work I also like to preheat this thing before I bring the pots out. I almost always will preheat my pots in my oven uh, to 550 degrees, but especially now, this is winter time, these bricks are cold, and so I start a fire ahead of time to preheat it. And again, I put the fire down below at the bottom, below the grates, and let it heat up for like a half hour or so and I think that helps because these bricks will suck up a lot of the heat. In fact, I've had times when I've actually had to add additional charcoal to get the fire as hot as I wanted. But once it's going, uh, you just have to let it go. And it takes five, six hours till they're cool enough to really pull out. So I think in the bottom line, if you just are able to stack up a bunch of bricks and make a cavity to put your pots in, it's probably going to work as long as it has enough ventilation. So the next step here is to bring some pots out or get a fire, pre-fire, bring the pots out and get them fired. All right, the first thing I do is put charcoal down in the bottom, get it lit up to preheat the bottom and the sides, all the bricks of the kiln, and then I'll bring the pots out in roughly a half hour once the charcoal's turned all gray. Okay, so the fire has been going here for more than a half hour. The pots have been heated up inside, and so it's time to put them on the fire. So I've stacked the pots up so there's a reasonable amount of airspace. Here's my sheep dung. The goal here is to try and create a Hopi blush. And now it's time to put some sherds in. The goal of the sherds largely is to protect the painting on the pots, but it also serves to kind of moderate the heat and the cooling. But it's possible to do all of this without any sherds at all. I think it's not real necessary to heat the sherds, um, but they always break some. Um, so you're always making more sherds it seems. <laughs> so now there's roughly a couple of inches of space all around which is about right. So I'm going to get this started and then I'm going to add more charcoal so it's covered over the everything here. Using lighter fluid and charcoal is obviously cheating. Briquettes seem to work about as well as lump charcoal. They don't get as hot, but they are way less expensive. So I prefer lump charcoal, but I don't like to pay for it. Lump charcoal can easily be a dollar a pound, and uh, that's starting. And briquettes, 60 cents a pound. So one of the advantages of a kiln like this is that the bricks moderate the heat. The charcoal, it takes a while to build up its heat. Where with a regular wood fire, you're going to have maximum heat within 10 minutes for sure. I mean, it's really fast. Oh. See? It's much easier on the pottery. So it, it ramps up slowly and it cools down slowly. This whole process here will be five, six hours, where with a wood fire, you are done in one hour total to where you can hold the pots. So the fire is burned down some. It's not nearly hot enough on the top. It's probably plenty hot on the bottom. So I'm just gonna cover it all up with more charcoal. So at this point, this has taken a massive amount of charcoal, probably 30 pounds, so no doubt overkill but you want it to work.
Okay, put the charcoal on top. It's uh, fully heated up, and so you can see, I think, that temp temperature is over 1,000 degrees Celsius, 1,045. So that, that is a hot fire. The fire's been going for about five hours now, and I've tested the temperature, and the sherds and pots are about 200 Celsius, maybe a little less. So I think it's okay to start uncovering this and see if we have any treasures. Okay, this is a test pot. Clay that was sent to me from New Mexico. Very similar to Hopi clay. Has a nice blush on it, don't you think? This is a uh, kit seal replica, kind of like a canteen, but I don't know what it's really supposed to be. Here's a canteen I made, not a prehistoric design. A little Hopi blush here, not too much on the front. The final little pot. This is some clay that was given to me. It was dug in Kansas. That turned out fine. Really rings. Wow. Very nice little pot. This is what the uh, sheep dung ends up looking like when it's all said and done. So you can see where they would stack this up and actually make a dome over the pots. Had enough sheep dung, you could uh, fire, all the firing could be done. Well, I hope that this uh, video has been helpful and that you can see how you could build a kiln like this in your own backyard. You can set it on the ground if you have space to do that. You can put it on a pedestal, a grill like this, whatever works for you. It's They're very adaptable. And in fact, it can, might not even cost you anything. If you can find some used bricks, of almost any sort that will work or you can buy them I think you could do this whole thing for around fifty dollars or so and the beauty of it is is that it's very effective uh, I have good outcomes almost all the time in surprisingly hot fires and rarely do I have fugitive paint so I am happy with it and it works well right in the middle of the city without any problems and partially because with charcoal it's really a contained fire I don't have a lot of problems with uh, sparks or anything like that. Uh, so I'm real happy with it and maybe it'll work well for you as well. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate that and thanks for your comments and for your thumbs up and those kinds of things. And until next time, this is Wes with Airstream Wanderings wishing you health, happiness, peace, and love. Take care. Bye-bye.